Hey YouTube, Roy Marco with Roy Marco's Garage here in the rain. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about electronic uh, ignition, Petronics. I put Petronics in the uh, Pontiac here. I did that actually before I went to Warman, Saskatchewan and uh, before I did the uh, all the work to it on uh, part A of my video where uh, in part one where I was getting the car ready. But I uh, forgot to do an intro, so anyway, I'm just doing an intro on this, on the product I put into the car, and then you'll see the video that I did uh, getting it all together, and redoing the distributor, and why I went Petronics. Uh, points are good. Uh, nothing wrong with points. In fact, I know guys have points, and they run them for years with no issues, especially on American cars. They're not such a big deal. I had an old Austin Mini 73, and that car, where the distributor was located, you hit a puddle or anything like that, you'd get in there, and... And then the points would go and so anyway uh, I didn't know about this product when I had that car and I discovered this one I had my 52 Chevy and so my 66 Chevelle and, and now this and I also am going to put uh, electronic ignition in my little Nash so I'll do a video on that too so anyway I just wanted to show you uh, Petronics ignition into my 56 Pontiac and hope you enjoy this video okay so to take this distributor out I'm just gonna pop the cap off I don't have a new cap or rotor yet. Should have bought that. But anyway, we're just gonna pop that out of the way. I'm gonna take this wire off. There's a bolt down here, and we'll get this whole distributor out. The reason I'm taking this distributor out is I want to uh, just clean it up. Uh, I noticed this bottom plate here is a little loose, so to tighten the screws, you gotta tighten them on the sides, and I can't tighten that one without pulling the distributor. So we'll pull this one out, clean it all up, paint it, so it looks nice. And there's a little grease cup I wanna show you on these distributors so you wanna clean up. These distributors also turn for vacuum advance and uh, there's a vacuum pot down here and they will turn the whole distributor instead of inside. Vacuum line hooks up to the uh, carburetor, base of the carburetor. So I'll get some tools and I'll be right back. Yeah, so we're just going to undo this nut here. Also I want to note the orientation of the rotor so I don't have to find number one again. And an uh, important thing about these distributors, they also run the oil pump and same with some other ones but on this car you can actually on these engines uh, the 216 the 235s and the 261s is uh, you can um, not drop it in all the way and still tighten it up and the car will run but it won't drive the uh, oil pump you don't want to ask me how I know that one okay, we'll take this wire off coil this wire can come completely off because we're not going to use it again so we can get rid of this completely and then uh, pull this distributor Okay, so I just got the uh, tool here. We're going to get rid of this wire. I'm also going to replace the coil on this uh, vehicle because uh, I might as well. You can use a standard coil as long as it's around 3 ohms um, on a 12 volt coil. So being a 12 volt coil, this coil that's on, the, uh, on this 261 right now is a drop voltage coil. It uses a, a ballast resistor. Uh, so we're just going to put a straight 12 volt bypass the Bellis resistor and it's just one less thing to leave you stranded on the side of the road. Like I said, I like to drive these cars. I want to make them reliable. We can pull this coil wire out of here uh, since we're going to pull that coil off and get this distributor out. Distributor pulls straight up. And it's out. You can see that plate, it's loose. I'm gonna do all that, clean this up. I wanna show you something with this grease cup too that a lot of people don't know about these distributors. So you can see on this vehicle it has the, uh, on the 260s, 261, 235s. They have a clamp that holds down, just like a, basically a fork. And it holds down the vacuum uh, advancement pod and then it holds on like a hose clamp and it turns the entire distributor. Okay, so I got the distributor out here. What I'm gonna do, this shaft is in pretty good shape. There's no uh, play in it. So I'm just gonna clean this all up with the Varsol. And this uh, flat slotted part actually drives the uh, oil pump. So it's important that uh, when we insert it that we get that in as well. I'm just gonna clean all this up with Varsol. 
on this here there's a grease cup when you unthread this you fill this with grease and then as you tighten it it greases the distributor a lot of people don't do that and it's important to turn that cup every so often uh, maybe every time you fill up with gas or something like that just give it a, a quarter turn and that greases the top shaft distributor it's not a lot of oil pressure around the distributor to keep it lubricated so that's important you could take this fitting off and put on a grease nipple and use a grease gun but I'm just gonna clean up this cap and use this looks like the grease in here is nice and soft that's a good sign Sometimes after 50 years, this becomes hard like rock. You gotta clean it all up. Anyway, you clean it up anyway. On a distributor, there's a vent somewhere, and on these, they're just vented out the bottom. So if moisture gets in, it just falls out the bottom of the distributor. But mainly that vent's for gas. Some caps will have a little vent on the cap itself, the plastic cap. There's a little like plastic piece. If that's not on there, uh, if you don't have the vent, sometimes these holes clog up especially in older cars, creates a certain gas in there from the arcing that goes on with the points and also your, um, your, your points shouldn't arc, that's the condenser. Make sure when your points arc, they burn up. Um, your condenser keeps that from happening, but I mean the arc from the uh, cap between the rotor and the cap, you get sparks in there. That creates a certain ion gas and that can build up. And uh, anyway, it has to be able to vent, so that's important. Take this all apart. This you can take apart with a flat blade screwdriver. Uh, you just kind of do one side. I happen to have the actual tool. My dad, he was a mechanic in the in the 50s and 60s, and he had this tool, special tool, to take this nut off. And now I got it. It's a nice tool to have, especially when you got to replace your points and condenser but this will be the last time this, I have to worry about that. I'm going to take this bolt completely out. This is where we're going to run the wiring through for the, uh, the new Petronics. I'm just cleaning up the top of this um, distributor drive here. I know it's a little bit of wear here, but we'll clean that up. It's got a couple of sharp edges that makes it hard to push the rotor back on. We'll clean that up. This also has a centrifugal advance inside, and so you could probably play with the springs if you did any hot rotting. There's a great uh, website, 6 equals 8. And they make these six cylinders, you know, lots of lots of power, mm. get camshafts and things like that. I'm not going to go that way with this, but uh, well, maybe one day, and we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll see what uh, YouTube wants, and maybe see what we can get done. So I'm just going to clean all the rust off this, so I can repaint the outside of it. Uh, all the plate, it's all nice and clean. Cups nice and clean. There's a little uh, gasket there. Just have to. Um, Fill that with grease, clean all this up, dry it all up, just clean up all these clips, put some paint on them, and put all this back together, and put our Petronics in here. Uh, usually you don't have to pull this distributor to do the Petronics, but I pulled it because I just want to clean it up. Here I got the distributor all cleaned up. I used a wire brush and uh, cleaned up all the rust and dirt, everything off of this with the Varsol, and then I put this section, ended up putting this in the lathe, I should have showed you that. I just chucked it in the lathe and gave it just uh, with a little bit of a sandpaper to file just to clean up the edge. And uh, now it's all nice and clean. I'm going to just shoot some paint on this. I use a little bit of a torch, heat it up just a little bit, and I'll throw on some paint. Now the reason I heat it up, you can see the moisture coming out of it. Metal holds a little bit of moisture, so uh, I put a little bit of heat on this. I'm not heating it up that much. Just want to heat it enough to make sure that it's dry. The paint will stick. The paint will dry fast, and I can uh, start working with this thing right away. This is sort of a wheel paint. It's a nice little cast color, and uh, we'll blow that on, and it looks super nice. It'll look like fresh cast, kind of like if it rolled off the factory. 
Uh, I don't know if these distributors are painted. If they were, they're probably painted black. But anyway, I just thought that would look nice. Just give it a little shot here. Okay, so here we are. We have our distributor all cleaned up and painted. Now, you don't have to take your distributor out of your car to put this in. I just figured I'd take the time to clean up this distributor. Uh, one of the main reasons to cleaning up this distributor is this uh, grease cup. This grease cup, you fill this up with grease and you tighten this down and you get it about there. When you start tightening this, grease will push out the end here, gets threaded back into the distributor. And every so often, you open the hood, you give that like half a turn and it greases the distributor. This distributor does get a little bit of oil from the engine, but not enough. So you gotta grease it as well. Like I said, you could thread in a grease nipple with an adapter probably and use a grease gun, give it a shot every so often. But this cup, uh, every time I maybe fill up with gas, I give it a half turn. And then every time you change oil, you refill this cup up with grease. Just something not a lot of people know about these distributors. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of people do know about it. So I'm gonna fill that up with grease. I use this, uh, this Lucas Red and Tacky wheel bearing grease. There might be a better grease out there. Maybe uh, some people would recommend using white lithium or uh, there's probably all kinds out there. But anyway, this is what I use. So you just level that off there. You'll notice when I tighten that in there, it'll come out. See, just like under hydraulic pressure, just like a grease gun. So uh, anyway, we'll thread this in and then we can uh, clean this up, put it in the distributor. Also, I got the base plate here. Uh, I was missing a screw here, third screw, so I went and bought some screws. I got some brass ones. Uh, they're slotted to look just like the original style screw, but they're brass. They won't they'll look nice. These are stainless lock washers. And uh, cleaned off my hands. This is the uh, Petronix ignition kit for this engine. Uh, this is uh, 1168 LS, is the part number. This one I got for about $149, uh, my cost, but this retails, let's suggest retail price here in, uh, in Canada is $157.99. When I first started using these, they were like 50, 60 bucks, and they just went up. They also make an Igniter 2 version, which uh, apparently has something to do with that uh, dwell. You can change it and things like that. I had uh, somebody with an MGB saying he wouldn't put one of these in because the points he could dial in his dwell and have better performance, but I've always been happy with this. If you want to keep points, there's nothing wrong with them. They were, they're pretty good. If you're going on a long trip, it's a good idea to have an extra set with you. Anyway, uh, for me, I want to install this. So in the kit, you get this uh, plate that screws down your adapter plate. And they changed. They used to have a little exciter ring that went on, but now it just uses the lobes off of the, uh, the cam inside. So that's kind of neat. It's just less things. And then it has a couple of eyelets which I like to solder on and I change the wire length to when I get in the car so I'm not going to uh, cut the wires yet uh, or put them on yet and then this has a little rubber grommet that pulls through and goes into the uh, distributor hole where the old plastic uh, piece went that remember I took out with that tool and this kind of pieces I like to keep if they're in good condition because maybe somebody else needs one down the road or maybe I want to go back to points for whatever reason I don't know Usually not, but anyway, it's a good idea to keep this stuff. Somebody needs it. They're restoring a car. They want to have it. I keep that stuff around. Build points. You can toss in condenser. Uh, putting this uh, grease thing in here. I just have this up so the paint would dry. There's a little spring that goes in into where the grease cup goes. And then this threads in. And then I'll use a wrench and tighten that. You don't have to go too crazy with it. Okay, turn that, that's uh, hydraulicing the grease through there, on grease gun, turn the shaft, see a little bit of grease coming there, so right now it's all dry and cleaned out, so I'm going to just turn it a bit, and then refill the, uh, there we go, we got some grease down at the base, perfect. I'll take that cap off and refill it. On my 52 Chevy, this thing, I don't know, was sitting for quite a while when I had a, a 52. I had a 216, this thing was so dry. 
the grease was like rock hard inside there and it uh, wasn't getting any lubrication so I had to pull it all apart take the distributor shaft all apart clean it put it back together and then you don't have to worry too much about it because you can wear out the shaft in these Now we're ready to install our base plate and to do that take out these screws I can say it was missing one and that, uh, that's why it was loose it has three screws in it so I got new ones here now Put this in here. Okay. So put this one in first. And the other two, we don't want to tighten it right away because you want to be able to move this around. We just gotta keep it loose. Move this around to get the other two in. The other two have these clips to hold the distributor cap on and these little clips that hold these in place okay so you take this got a round uh, point round part follows the curve of the distributor clip goes up as faces down gets installed like that on the distributor side in So you don't have to go too crazy with how tight they are, but you want them nice and snug. And tighten up that first one we started with. Boy, that looks nice with the brass screws. Uh, with things different colors it gives nice detail okay these screws will pop out this is holding down the uh, condenser and one was holding down the points now with the new patronics in here this just slides on like that Okay. Lines up with the dowel pin here where the old points were. And there is no real adjustment on this. There's just a screw, there's no there's no adjustment. So it picks up the points, it picks up off of the cam. There you go. It's nice and precision. The old one used to have a plastic collar that goes on. Actually, here's a, a stealth unit. This is for my uh, Austin, or um, the Nash Metropolitan with the Austin engine. And uh, this one still has the little cam, the plastic cam that slides on below the, the rotor. But on the new Petronics, on the old one I installed, uh, it had the plastic cam, but now it has the magnetic pickup. It just picks up the lobes, the six lobes on the uh, distributor. So it's uh, one less piece to worry about and makes for a nice clean install. I'm going to put another screw down on this side here just to hold it. I'm just going to use a short one here. Okay. Yeah, I just worried this uh, my screw might be too long and run into the uh, in, into the uh, flyweights down there and uh, a centrifugal mechanism that would be horrible disaster if that happened so okay so there we go all together now we just have to take these wires and we feed them through here and it comes with a grommet on here already so okay all right we'll just hold the grommet pull the wires I'll just go on this side of the 
brass pin. We don't want to have any stress on those wires, just nice and relaxed in there, just like that. And then our rotor is ready to go on. Should have bought a new rotor. Okay, it has a little notch inside that lines up with this groove on here, and that's it. So we are now ready to reinstall this distributor back in the car. Okay, one of the tricks I like to do on the wire, this is heat shrink tubing, I cut little pieces, and uh, I put them every so often to kind of keep the wires together, and then I'll heat shrink them, and it'll just look a little neater, keep the wires together. Done. Just keeps it nice and neat and then we'll cut it to the length we need it and put the ends on. Okay, we're ready to put this distributor back in. This uh, grease cup usually faces the rear and we'll have to line this up in the uh, shaft to run the oil goes down and make sure it's at the right and also where our, remember where the piece was, uh, your rotor. Uh, in alignment with the distributor should be able to line this right back up okay Okay, here's the coil. There's a bracket here. So undo this flat blade screw here. It'll spread. I'll pull this coil out. Put in a new one. This coil, you can see. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I don't know the history behind. It. I don't know how old it is. Let's just change it. Just to show you, this is the old one, and so you can see it says uh, "use with primary resistor." It's a 12 volt coil, but use with primary resistor. So this is a good used coil. And this is uh, use without external resistor. It's 12 volt, uh, 3 ohm coil. So we're going to put that in to the bracket and then mount it back on the car. I'm just going to bolt this on. Also, another note: you don't want to over tighten these coils in the brackets. You can uh, squash them, and then uh, you can wreck them. So. Just snug them up enough so the bracket holds the coil without uh, squashing the case. Nuts on. Add the coil wire. Put it back on. Okay, one last thing we need to do is bypass that resistor. Okay, here's that ignition ballast resistor I'm talking about. What I'm going to do is undo the one side. Do the other side. And then slip this wire in with it. I'll uh, fix up the wiring later. You know, it looks like it's still there, gives it some original sort of look, but I will uh, just probably tie these together. But now we can test it and see if we can get it running. Okay, try it again. Try it again? Yep.
so there you have it. Uh, we took out the points and we put it in electronic ignition from Petronics and now we never have to worry about changing these uh, on the side of the road again. I've had uh, in the past I had old cars and I'd carry an extra set and I remember several times being on the side of the highway having to change these. So uh, I've run these before and I love them. I, I swear by them. Uh, I like the performance I get out of the car. Uh, it's yeah I just I just uh, can't recommend them enough so if you have an older car and you want some more reliability this is uh, one key thing to do. And if you like please subscribe and have a great day.